because to be honest with you, maths A level gives me slight PTSD. I thought I was naturally good at maths and then bash, A level hit me. This is probably the most important thing with maths. Then you're just gonna keep losing easy marks that you can address by simply. Tip number nine was fundamental for me. <laughs> channel so I'm assuming if you've clicked on today's video then you are taking a maths a level and I'm not gonna lie to you you are in for one hell of a ride with a lot of ups and downs I took a biology chemistry and a maths a level and I have to say maths was definitely my problem subject and one of my hardest a levels I started off getting C's D's maybe a couple of E's a lot of tears were shed and I genuinely thought I was gonna fail it but I got my A in the end, I got there eventually and so can you if you watch the whole of today's video and get some of my essential tips. But first, if you like the sound of today's video then please give it a big thumbs up. It helps me know that you like these kind of videos and also if you are new then hi I am Anna. My channel has a little bit of something for everyone from uni content, I study medicine at university, academia, lifestyle and it would mean so much if you decided to stick around and join the little family we have going on here. So I've had a lot of requests to make this video and I have been a little bit hesitant because to be honest with you maths A level gives me slight PTSD. I spent a lot of time getting very stressed, very upset unnecessarily and if I had a video like this then maybe a lot of time would have been saved and a lot of tears would not have been shed so I wanted to make this to help you all out and share my experience and essential things that you need to do to get you through maths A level. These are going to help you out so much especially the last two tips literally saved my grade in maths. Tip number one which is do not expect to find it easy. Now, I was getting A stars, nines in GCSE. I didn't actually have to put in that much work. I thought I was good at maths. I thought I was naturally good at maths. And then, bash, A level hit me. And I did not know what I was in for. Do not expect to find it easy. And you know what? If you start failing at the beginning, if you're like me, getting Ds, then don't panic. You will be fine. As long as you expect to find it hard and you go in with the mindset that you're going to have to work hard and you will get through it, then you will be fine. Your grades will gradually get higher and higher and higher. You do have two years working at this subject. And just because you were good at GCSE does not automatically entitle you to be good at maths A level. In my opinion, they're two completely different things. You could be really good at GCSE and just not get A level. And sometimes that is fine. As long as you don't bury your head, work at the topics you're not understanding and put in the work, then you are going to get there. But just don't stress about it. Don't waste time panicking. It's not good for you. It's not good for your mental health. It's also not good for your grades. Panicking, crying, stressing does nobody any good. Just try and keep rational and keep plodding on. Tip number two, you've probably heard in every single video like this, but that is practice. Practice, practice, practice. Honestly, I cannot tell you, in maths, you cannot do enough practice questions. It's probably the only subject where the actual knowledge you need to know is that minimal, but it is all about application. Keep doing practice questions, and if you think you've done enough, just do some more. It is honestly one of those subjects where it's just about the more you do, the better you get. The more questions you do, the more time you spend on it, the more you're gonna understand it and get your head around it. Even if you are doing the new spec, which I know can be challenging, because you don't have as many past papers then go on physics and maths tutors do the older questions and save the new papers that are in the same style to what your exams will be towards the end for when you've got the hang of the stuff don't waste really important questions like real exam papers when you don't even know the knowledge you're just going to be wasting those questions save those till near your exam dates when you've actually learned it you're good at it and you can practice doing harder questions what i would recommend is doing easier questions first and build your way up to the harder questions so you can actually build the foundations rather than just shocking yourself and doing the hard ones this strategy does work for some people but in my opinion i think it's a bit of a waste to waste all the important harder questions for when you actually don't even get it number three links in with these practice questions but if you get a question wrong redo it until you get it right do not be that person that just puts a cross and then moves on buries their head and leaves the question like oh i got it wrong who cares no you do care and you should care 
get a whiteboard and then redo the question and spot where you have gone wrong and notice where you've gone wrong. So it could just be a silly mistake or it could be a fundamental gap in your knowledge that you need to go and address. Work out why you're going wrong and then go and do something about it. Don't bury your head, redo these questions again and again and again until you get it right and then check over your original answer and see why you were going wrong and what you need to do about it. Number four is address the areas that you're weak at. So do loads of questions on topics that you find harder. Don't just do whole papers or randomly do loads of questions from really easy subjects. I found loads of people in maths do this. It can be so easy to just do topics that you find easy and then think you're doing really well and then come to the exams and do awfully because you haven't practiced on the areas that you find really hard and your weaker areas. So if you have a weaker area, go on to physics and maths tutor and get a bunch of questions just on this topic. For instance, I hated integration, hated it, but I forced myself to do a load of questions until I got it. So just do extra work on the topics that you find harder, else you're just burying your head doing easier questions. Number five is ask for help. Now, at the start of maths, I was actually so embarrassed to ask for help. I didn't want to admit I was struggling and I hated asking my teacher. I think as well, because I was one of the only girls in my class, not many girls were doing maths. I didn't want to come across like I was being stupid but trust me that in itself is stupid ask for help ask if you have a question and to be honest with you loads of people are probably in the same boat you're probably actually helping the rest of your class by asking the question because you won't be the only one thinking it and if someone else understands it then it's just consolidating their knowledge and making sure they understand it properly so do ask for help where you need it because otherwise you're just gonna go home, get stuck on it, and there's no point in that. If you have a question, ask it there and there. Number six, I actually spoke about in my 10 things I wish I knew before sixth form, and that is such a helpful video. If you haven't seen it already and you're in year 12 and 13, then I'll stick it in the description box below and in the icon here. But I mentioned about going to as many workshops as possible, and this is probably the most important thing with maths. If anything, going to a workshop just forces you to spend more time doing more questions. And even if you don't think you've got any questions or any work to do, there's always something you can find to do in maths. And also you're gonna hear everyone else's questions. You might have not even noticed that you don't understand one topic. And then the teacher will go through a question that somebody else has and you'll identify a whole new gap in your knowledge that you need to work on. At the time, it's gonna feel rubbish. It's gonna be like, oh, just another thing I need to add to my list, the things I don't understand about maths. But you're gonna address it now rather than later on in the year or near your exam date. Maths A level is one of those where you're in it together. Everyone is probably finding it as hard as you. Maybe not quite as hard, but they are still finding it hard. So it's nice to be around lots of people doing the same thing and working at it. And teamwork always makes everything seem a little bit easier. Number seven is to actually consolidate your knowledge and actually do right notes. Now, I know some people that didn't do very well in maths because they thought, there's no knowledge to learn. It's all maths. What do you need to know? No, there are things you need to know. There are equations that you need to revise and you just need to learn them and consolidate all of that into some revision notes. Now, this is all my revision notes for the whole of my two years of maths. And because there is not actually that much knowledge, but the stuff you need to know is fundamental as you're never going to be able able to answer the questions and you need to ensure you know it. So as you go along, consolidate all of the knowledge into revision notes and get it organized into one folder so you can just learn it. This is gonna include all of your equations, all of your algebra, and lines, literally just everything you need to know. You need to have it in some really consolidated, easy to learn notes. Then what I did is divide it into different topics of C1, C2, C3, and I put really hard questions that I wasn't understanding at the front of each topic. So I could just go over these really hard questions in my own time when I was going through my notes. This brings me on to point number eight, and that is create some flashcards. So when I was doing papers or topic questions and these weren't silly mistakes these were actual concepts that I didn't understand I cut out the question and wrote it on to a flashcard so I could just go and see these questions and learn the concepts and make sure that I didn't make the same mistakes in maths the same sorts of questions do come up year and year and year and if you keep getting the same concepts wrong then you're just going to keep losing easy marks that you can address by simply going over these flashcards and making sure you never get them wrong tip number nine was 
fundamental for me actually managing to get my A in maths and that was to get these CGP guides. Now I love CGP guides because they just explain everything in a much simpler way. What I used to do is use the textbook in class and write notes from that and then come home and go over the topic with the CGP guides. In maths in particular I find you could have the same person explain the same concept to you thousands of times and you still won't get it and then one person explains it in a slightly different way and suddenly it clicks and you understand the whole concept, you're smashing the questions. This is kind of like the CGP guides. Your teacher and the textbook could explain it in one way and then suddenly you'll read it in the CGP guide and understand it straight away. And that is why I love these books. They explain it in such a simple way that often if I didn't get the concept in class, then I got it in this book and I wrote all of my notes with a combination of my class textbook and this textbook to get a really, really brief revision note summary for each topic. And then I would always do the CGP guide questions because like I said, you can never do too many questions and these were just so good as a foundation for maths and finally number 10 is crucial and that is simply do not panic in any way throughout the whole of maths a level the worst thing you can do is panic and get yourself stressed especially when it comes to doing real exams if you just don't understand a the question then do not waste time panicking stressing doing it wrong stop leave the question and come back to it the worst thing you can ever do in maths is panic and rush your questions you want to take your time reread every single working out make sure you're not making silly mistakes because trust me if you panic you're going to make a really tiny silly mistakes that are going to cost you so many marks when they just don't need to breathe take your time with every single step reread all of your working out and just rationally do it so that is the end of today's video i really hope you found all 10 of these tips helpful if you are taking maths then best of luck to all of you i know you can do it have faith in yourself check all of your working out and just be confident in your abilities know that if you put in the work you will get there one day it is not worth the tears Rewatch this video use these tips and work your hardest and you will get there yes a level maths is really hard it is not a hard a level for no reason but it's by no means impossible and i know every single one of you can completely smash these exams and i really hope that these tips make it seem just a little bit easier let me know in the comment box below how you are getting on with maths a level and if i can help in any other way at all i would also love if anybody else had any extra tips then stick them in the comments box below so we can all help each other out and i will see you all so soon everyone in my next video bye